right, we're working in intermediate algebra. This is the beginning of chapter two. So we're gonna start on page 63. If you're following along in your book, which is always a good idea, of course. Uh, section 2.1 is an introduction to systems of linear equations. Uh, we've talked about linear equations in chapter one, but now we're gonna talk about systems. A system of equations is simply two or more equations that are being grouped or solved together. So for instance, 2x plus 4y equals 10, and you guys know this as a linear equation, it's in standard form, negative 5x plus 7y equals negative 3. By putting this braces around these two equations, I am grouping them together and they are now a system. The point of a system is to solve for x or y, and there are three different possibilities when you start to solve a linear equation. There's actually three different methods we're gonna go through to solve them. We're gonna go through solving by graphing, solving using substitution, and solving using elimination. But there's also three different possibilities when you solve. Um, I think I have those on the next slide. Yes. So this is a picture of page 64 in your book, if you want to go there, page 64, there it is, the page number right there. If you want to go there, this is a picture, and I know that it's not one really clear, so that's why it's a good idea to uh, look in your book. Um, these are the three different possibilities when you're solving a system of equations together. You can either get one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution. All right, those are the only three possibilities. To get one solution when you're solving by graphing means that those two lines cross or intersect at one point. So one solution means the lines intersect at one point. When you're solving and you figure out there's one solution, it's your job to find out the ordered pair of that one point where the two lines intersect and that is the one solution. And we'll talk about there's three ways to find out what that point is and how we're going to find it. But this is the first possibility. The two lines intersect, it gives one solution, and we'll give the ordered pair that is the solution. Um, there's also the possibility that there's infinitely many solutions. Or in other words, and this looks a little weird because I thought we were talking about two equations, but sometimes those two equations, you can see these two equations right up here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, it looks like negative x plus y equals x plus 3 and negative 2x plus y equals 3. Those are the two equations. It just so happens that when you graph them, they graph in the same exact spot. So in other words, one of those lines lies exactly on top of the other. They are in, a, in effect the same line. And that means that they actually intersect each other all along here, which are infinitely many points. So there's infinitely many solutions or those, these two lines are intersecting at every point. Um, when you use substitution or elimination, your solution comes out to look something like this. 0 equals 0, 3 equals 3, 12 equals 12. A true statement that has no x or y in it at all. That will tell you that there's infinitely many solutions. Or when you graph, they make the same line. The third option is down here at the bottom of the chart. There's no solution. No solution means the two lines do not intersect anywhere. And what kind of lines? don't intersect parallel lines. So if there's no solution, that means the lines are parallel. They will never intersect. No solution looks like this. When you use substitution or elimination, you'll get some kind of statement that's false. 0 equals negative 3 is not a true statement. 0 cannot equal negative 3. Or it will say 2 equals 5 or 12 equals 1. Some kind of false statement that tells you the lines never intersect. There's no solution. The lines are parallel. All right, we're gonna go to example three, I'm sorry, example one on page 65, where we're gonna verify solutions. The question asks us, is the point zero to a solution for this system? And I'm gonna write the system out. The system is two X plus five Y equals 10 and negative five X plus seven Y 
equals negative 3. Is this point a solution to this, uh, this system? In other words, is this the place where these two lines cross? All right. Um, to find that out without a graph algebraically, you have to first verify, is this point a solution to this equation? And is this point a solution to this equation? If the point is a solution to each equation individually, then it is a solution to the system. So we'll substitute it in for x and y individually, and you'll have to do it twice. So we'll first put it in this equation, then we'll put it in this equation. So if we substitute this in, of course, don't forget this one's x and this one's y. We'll put 0 in for x and 2 in for y, and then we'll uh, simplify. So 2 times 0 plus 5 times 2 equals 10. Is this a true statement? Well, this is 0, and this is 10. Is this a true statement? Yes, it is. So it is a solution for the first equation. When I put it into the second equation, negative 5 times 0 plus 7 times 2 equals negative 3. I get 0 plus 14 equals negative 3. Okay, this is not a true statement. 14 does not equal negative 3. So it does not solve this equation. So is it a solution to the system? Yes or no? This is just a yes or no question. This is not a solution. And that's how you answer this question. No, not a solution. The ordered pair has to be a solution to both equations to be a solution to the system. It's not enough that it solved one equation. It has to solve both. Okay, example three. I'm sorry, example two. <laughs> Same page page 65. Same type of question. Is the point 2, 1 a solution for this system? And the system is 3x plus 6y equals 12 and 5x plus 10y equals 20. And again, we're going to solve, we're going to substitute these in for x and y. In the first equation, 3 times 2 plus 6 times 1 equals 12. When I simplify, I get 6 plus 6 equals 12. Is this a true statement? Yes, it is. So it does solve this equation. When I go to the second equation, let's see if I can move this a little bit. 5 times 2 plus 10 times 1 equals 20. Well, that says 10 plus 10 equals 20. It does solve this equation. So yes, this is a solution because it solves both equations. That's how we answer this. Yes, a solution. An ordered pair has to solve each equation individually to be a solution. All right, now we're at example three on page 66. Same type of question, is the point 7, 12, a solution for this system. And the system says 6x equals 42, 1 seventh x minus y equals negative 11. All right, don't let uh, that fraction there ball you up because I know um, at this level a lot of students have a tendency to just say, oh, there's a fraction there, so I'm just going to skip it. Don't skip it. You're never going to get the practice you need if you skip. So this is x, this is y. In the first equation, 6 times x or 6 times 7 equals 42. It doesn't matter that there's no y. Is this a true statement? Indeed it is. So this is a solution for the first equation. In the second equation, 1 seventh times x or 1 seventh times 7 minus 12 equals negative 11. I need to simplify this 1 7 times 7. These are reciprocals. This would be 7 over 1 if you put it in a fraction, and that would give you 7 over 7, which is 1. Anytime you multiply a number times its reciprocal, you always get 1. So 1 
minus 12 does make negative 11. So this is a true statement also. So this does solve both equations. So yes, this is a solution. All right, and I will tell you, for most teachers, myself included, if you're in my class, doing all of this work is not enough. This is your answer. Yes, you can do all this. Yes, you can do all this. You can put your check marks here. But if you don't make this conclusion, then you will not get credit for this question because you have not shown that you know what all of this means. This is your statement. This is your answer. So make sure that you say at the end of this question, yes, it is a solution or no, it is not a solution. All right, that's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one.